Okay, hey guys. Um, today we are doing the limit of a function. So we just watched a whole intro to limits video. So limits is a huge topic, um, but we're gonna just stay on it for about a week. And um, this uh, video is just about looking at different equations, different functions. Um, and we're just going to determine the limit of them as we approach it from the left and the right side. So, for example, I'm actually just going to cover section 1.4 in that Nelson Green textbook. So, you can follow along in the textbook. And this note is also in the note section of the course for the video. Okay. So, we're going to look at the function y equals x squared minus 1. And we're going to see what the limit of that function is as x approaches 2. So we want to determine the limit of y equals x squared minus 1 as x approaches 2. So we're going to look at it from the left and the right side. So I'm going to show you a table, um, but eventually you're not going to do it like this. But for now, let's look at a table. So let's look at our y values and our x values. I said those in the opposite order, but you know what I mean. Okay, so I'm gonna set this up the same way as your textbook sets this up, which is like a little bit annoying, but it's easy to see. Two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so let's put, that's the value we wanna get to, right? When x equals two. And if I just sub in a two for x, 2 squared is 4, minus 1 is 3. Okay, so I have a value that it seems to be approaching. But let's just check out values that are on the left side of 2. So like 1, 1 1.5, 1 1.9, 1.99, 1 1.999. So see how we're approaching 2 from the left? And then let's approach it from the right. So like 2.001, 2.01. 2.1, 2.5, um, 3, and that's all we're going to get to. Just scratch those out. Okay, so let's just see. I'm going to do my y values in red. All we're doing is we're substituting in these x values into our equation. So when x equals 1, 1 squared is 1, minus 1 is 0. So I'm just making a table of values in a horizontal kind of way. Then I sub in 1.5. And I get 1.25. I sub in 1.9 and I get 2.61. I sub in 1.99 and I get 2.969. I sub in 1.999 and I get 2.996001. This is the spot where you want to keep all your decimal places because you're trying to see what you're approaching. You don't want to do any massive rounding just yet. And then on the other side, we're just going to keep subbing in stuff. We get 3.004. 3.0401, 3.41, and so on. You can continue to do that. So we can see that as we approach from the left and as we approach from the right, as x is approaching 2, our y value is approaching 3. So um, we, would just, we would just say that the limit as x approaches 2 of um, x squared minus 1 is equal to 3. Remember in the previous video we talked about how a limit only exists if it's the same from the left and from the right? And in this case, it is. Okay, cool. Let's try another one. Okay, so let's determine the limit as x approaches 1 of this function, x squared minus 1 divided by x minus 1. Oh, you know what? Just, um, do I have decimals open? No, but let's just graph the previous one, x squared minus 1. Although I know, I know you know what that looks like, but let's just do it, x squared minus 1. So we can see that um, we're approaching 2. right here. Um, so we can see that as we approach from 
the left side we're approaching two and the right side, or sorry, we're approaching three from the left and the right side. And remember like that video, you can tell if a function is continuous. Do you remember that part of the limit video? So you can tell if a function is continuous if, um, if the limit exists and if the limit is equal to the y value um, at that point, which it is. So that's just another thing to note. So that's just saying, I don't know if you remember this, but you can tell if a function is continuous because the limit of your function um, at when like x equals a, the limit of your function is actually equal to f of a, which it is. Okay, cool. So that's just how you tell if a function is continuous or not. Okay, awesome. So anyways, move back to this one. We ha now have x squared minus 1 over x minus 1. So let's just get a preview of what that looks like. y equals x squared minus 1 divided by x minus 1. Looks like a straight line. Hmm. But I bet you, um, hmm. Let me just. I would think that we would have a hole in our graph. Let's do that. Let's see. Um, when x equals 1, let's just trace our line through here. Oh, yeah. Okay, see how at x equals 1, our function is undefined? So that's interesting because that makes sense because when if you subbed a 1 in for x, 1 minus 1 would be 0. So therefore, your function will be undefined there. Okay, cool. All right, so we're graphing this crazy function, um, which we also know from grade 11 that the top of that is x minus 1, x plus 1, and the bottom is x minus 1. So if those canceled out, you're actually just getting the line x plus 1, I'm thinking. Yeah. With a hole in it. Okay, cool. So we can tell right away from just graphing that that it's not a continuous function. Like there's going to be a hole at x equals 1. Okay, so therefore, we're going to need the help of our table, kind of. I mean, not really. To tell what um, x is approaching or what y is approaching when x is approaching 1. Okay, so let's get our table going on here. So... We're trying to determine what happens when x equals 1. So let's start from the left side. Let's go like 0, 0 0.5, 0 0.9, 0 0.999, or whatever. I'm just going to stop there. Um, well, let's just do three nines. That's super hard to fit in there. 999. Nine, nine. And then let's do 1.001, 1. 1.1, 1. 1.52. There's no rules for like what values you have to hit. I'm just doing a bunch to show. Okay, so when I sub 0 in, like 0 squared minus 1 is minus 1, 0 minus 1 is minus 1, minus 1 divided by minus 1 is 1. So I'm subbing all these values in. I'm just making a table of values and calculating all of these. We know this is going to be undefined because it would make the denominator 0, 2.001, 2.1, 2.5, 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, 2.5, 2.6, 2.7, 2.8, 2.9, 2.10, 2.11, 2.12, 2.13, 2.14, 2.15, 2.16, 2.17, 2.18, 2.19, 2.20, 2.21, 2.22, 2.23, 2.24, 2.25, 2.26, 2.27, 2.28, 2.29, 2.30, 2.31, 2.32, 2.33, 2.34, 2.35, 2.36, 2.37, 2.38, 2.39, 2.40, 2.41, 2.42, 2.43, 2.44, 2.45, 2.46, 2.47, 2.48, 2.49, 2.50, 2.51, 2.52, 2.53, 2.54, 2.55, 2.56, 2.57, 2.58, 2.59, 2.60, 2.61, 2.62, 2.63, 2.64, 2.65, 2.66, 2.67, 2.68, 2.69, 2.70, 2.71, 2.72, 2.73, 2.74, 2.75, 2.76, 2.77, 2.78, 2.79, 2.80, 2.81, 2.82, 2.83, 2.84, 2.85, 2.86, 2.87, 2.88, 2.89, 2.90, 2.91, 2.92, 2.93, 2.94, 2.95, 2.96, 2.97, 2.98, 2.99, 2.100, 2.101, 2.102, 2.103, 2.104, 2.105, 2.106, 2.107, 2.108, 2.109, 2.110, 2.111, 2.112, 2.113, 2.114, 2.115, 2.116, 2.117, 2.118, 2.119, 2.120, 2.121, 2.122, 2.123, 2.124, 2.125, 2.126, 2.127, 2.128, 2.129, 2.130, 2.131, 2.132, 2.133, 2.134, 2.135, 2.136, 2.137, 2.138, 2.139, 2.140, 2.151, 2.152, 2.153, 2.154, 2.155, 2.156, 2.157, 2.158, 2.159, 2.160, 2.170, 2.171, 2.172, 2.173, 2.174, 2.175, 2.176, 2.177, 2.178, 2.179, 2.180, 2.181, 2.182, 2.183, 2.184, 2.185, 2.186, 2.187, 2.188, 2.189, 2.190, 2.191, 2.192, 2.193, 2.194, 2.195, 2.196, 2.197, 2.198, 2.199, 2.200, 2.201, 2.202, 2.203, 2.204, 2.205, 2.206, 2.207, 2.208, 2.209, 2.210, 2.211, 2.212, 2.213, 2.214, 2.215, 2.216, 2.217, 2.218, 2.219, 2.220, 2.221, 2.222, 2.223, 2.224, 2.225, 2.226, 2.227, 2.228, 2.229, 2.230, 2.231, 2.232, 2.233, 2.234, 2.235, 2.236, 2.237, 2.238, 2.239, 2.240, 2.241, 2.242, 2.243, 2.244, 2.245, 2.246, 2.247, 2.248, 2.249, 2.250, 2.251, 2.252, 2.253, 2.254, 2.255, 2.256, 2.257, 2.258, 2.259, 2.260, 2.271, 2.272, 2.273, 2.274, 2.275, 2.276, 2.277, 2.278, 2.279, 2.280, 2.291, 2.292, 2.293, 2.294, 2.295, 2.296, 2.297, 2.298, 2.299, 2.300, 2.301, 2.302, 2.303, 2.304, 2.305, 2.306, 2.307, 2.308, 2.309, 2.310, 2.311, 2.312, 2.313, 2.314, 2.315, 2.316, 2.317, 2.318, 2.319, 2.320, 2.321, 2.322, 2.323, 2.324, 2.325, 2.326, 2.327, 2.328, 2.329, 2.330, 2.331, 2.332, 2.333, 2.334, 2.335, 2.336, 2.337, 2.338, 2.339, 2.440, 2.451, 2.452, 2.453, 2.454, 2.455, 2.456, 2.457, 2.458, 2.459, 2.460, 2.471, 2.472, 2.473, 2.474, 2.475, 2.476, 2.478, 2.479, 2.480, 2.491, 2.492, 2.493, 2.494, 2.495, 2.496, 2.497, 2.498, 2.499, 2.500, 2.510, 2.511, 2.512, 2.513, 2.514, 2.515, 2.516, 2.517, 2.518, 2.519, 2.520, 2.521, 2.522, 2.523, 2.524, 2.525, 2.526, 2.527, 2.528, 2.529, 2.530, 2.531, 2.532, 2.533, 2.534, 2.535, 2.536, 2.537, 2.538, 2.539, 2.540, 2.541, 2.542, 2.543, 2.544, 2.545, 2.546, 2.547, 2.548, 2.549, 2.550, 2.551, 2.552, 2.553, 2.554, 2.555, 2.566, 2.577, 2.578, 2.579, 2.580, 2.581, 2.582, 2.583, 2.584, 2.585, 2.596, 2.597, 2.508, 2.509, 2.510, 2.511, 2.512, 2.513, 2.514, 2.515, 2.516, 2.517, 2.518, 2.519, 2.520, 2.521, 2.522, 2.523, 2.524, 2.525, 2.526, 2.527, 2.528, 2.529, 2.530, 2.531, 2.532, 2.533, 2.534, 2.535, 2.536, 2.537, 2.538, 2.539, 2.540, 2.541, 2.542, 2.543, 2.544, 2.545, 2.546, 2.547, 2.548, 2.549, 2.550, 2.551, 2.552, 2.553, 2.554, 2.555, 2.566, 2.577, 2.578, 2.579, 2.580, 2.581, 2.582, 2.583, 2.584, 2.585, 2.596, 2.597, 2.508, 2.509, 2.510, 2.511, 2.512, 2.513, 2.514, 2.515, 2.516, 2.517, 2.518, 2.519, 2.520, 2.521, 2.522, 2.523, 2.524, 2.525, 2.526, 2.527, 2.528, 2.529, 2.530, 2.531, 2.532, 2.533, 2.534, 2.535, 2.536, 2.537, 
And again, our limit is the same as we approach from the left and the right. So therefore the limit does exist. Okay, cool. Let's try another one. Okay, let's do a piecewise function. So these ones are kind of crazy. So we would define our function f of x as three different things. So we're saying if x, the, our function is x minus one if x is less than one. Our function is equal to one if x is equal to one. And our function is equal to two plus root x minus one if x is greater than one. So this is what's called a piecewise function. So it's got different functions depending on what our x value is. So let's just sketch this out without Desmos because it should be pretty easy. Okay, so here's our graph. Oh, you know what? Sorry. I'm actually just going to use the grid and notability, which is um, none of these buttons. There we go. Paper, grid, got it. Okay, I'm sorry this is taking so long. I need to like prep stuff ahead of time. Okay, so if x is greater than one, actually let's just put the middle one on because if x is equal to one, then y is one. Cool, so we have a dot there. Then it says if x is less than one, our graph is equal to um, x minus one. Um, so I'll have a, it's gonna be a straight line, the positive one slope and a y-intercept of negative one. And it's not gonna exist at one. So I would just make an open circle here and then make this straight line like that. Okay, and then if x is greater than one, that's one, then our function's gonna be like this guy, which is like a radical function. Remember those guys always look kinda like this? So if I'm thinking of my grade 11 transformations correctly, um, well, what if I subbed in a one, one minus one would be zero plus two. So it's gonna be at two, but it's not gonna actually exist there. So I'm just gonna put an open circle there. And then I know my rational function, I don't really care what it does, it's gonna go that way. But I know like essentially that's what my graph's gonna look like. I don't really care about all the little tiny transformations of that rash radical function. Like I know if I was graphing y equals two plus root x minus one, just from grade 11 knowledge, I know this would make my, this would be my vertical shift up to, and this would be my to the right one. So my graph would actually start at that open circle, but it says my function only exists for values that are greater than one. Oops, sorry, I just underlined the wrong one. Greater than one. So that's why I put the open circle because I don't want to include one. Look at when x equals one, because it's saying that my graph doesn't actually exist there. I know you can actually sub a one in, but this guy trumps the actual equation. Okay, so we have this crazy piecewise function. It's made up of a straight line that ends here. It's got a point right here, and then it's got a radical function that goes like that. Crazy, so that's, like a, that's called a piecewise function. It's like a bunch of different functions in one. Okay, so let's just see if we wanted to um, determine the limit of this crazy function as x approaches 1. Well, if we pick 1, obviously, because that's where it's all surrounding, so that's the most interesting thing. Okay, so I'm going to look at, instead of doing a table, this is a crazy piecewise function, we sketched it out. I'm gonna look at coming in from the left and the right hand side. Okay, so if I'm coming in from the left, the limit as x approaches one from the left, so we put the little minus sign of our function, f of x is gonna be equal to, well I can tell if I'm starting on the left side of the graph here, I'm gonna take this function because that's the most left function and it looks like I'm approaching one, right? How'd I say? Oh, just kidding. What? I'm crazy. I'm approaching zero. That's x equals one. So we're always checking what y value we're approaching. Sorry about that. So we're coming from the left-hand side. And what y value are we approaching? 
we're approaching zero on the y-axis. Okay, so as I would say zero. Okay, let's look at from the right. So I'm gonna take the limit as x approaches one from the right-hand side. So now I'm starting on the right-hand side of the graph. So I'm gonna pick this guy because it's the rightest function. And I'm gonna approach one. And when I approach one, I see that I'm approaching two as my y value. So the limit of f of x as x approaches one from the right, um, I'm approaching two. Cool. Um, so now we notice that since the limit as x approaches one from the left and does not equal the limit of f of x as we approach from one from the right. So since our limits aren't equal, this one's zero, this one's two, then the limit as x approaches one of f of x does not exist. We always just put d and e, but it stands for does not exist. And that's because the left and the right hand limit are not the same, which is crazy because the function actually does exist at one and it's one. But since you're approaching, like you have these other two functions in here, and they're not approaching one, they're approaching zero and two. So, crazy, but the limit does not exist. <clears throat> okay, so that, I'm gonna stop there. That should get you through um, section 1.4 of the textbook, just talking about general limits of functions as we approach from the left and the right. And sometimes you can simply sub in a, a variable, like instead of doing this whole table, we could have actually subbed in two and found out that it was approaching it. Same with this one, we kind of, well, no, this one would have been harder to see because if we actually subbed it in, it would be undefined. So like sometimes you could just sub something right in because this one's just a quadratic. So you could easily tell the values that it would be approaching. This one may be less easy. So you can always do a table and this piecewise function is almost easier to actually make a graph so you can see which one they're approaching. But if you didn't make a graph, you could also, as you're approaching from the left, um, you know you're gonna use this equation. So if I subbed in one, one minus one is zero. So that works. And for this one, sorry, if I subbed in one for this, I would actually get two. So I mean, even if you didn't graph it, you could still figure it out.